This is the reality. Hello to you. Welcome to the reality. My name's Dudley Anderson. Really good to be with you once again, sharing with you a life touched and changed for the good, for good, by a real relationship with Jesus Christ. The Reality is produced by Sure Reality, which is a listener-supported radio ministry. Please find out more on how you can partner with us at the website surereality.net or drop me an email at dudley at surereality.net. Dan Adams believed his life was panning out well. He was living it up at parties and indulging in drugs and alcohol. Leanne had entered Dan's life at an early age. She was a follower of Jesus, though lukewarm in her faith. Leanne came to know Christ as her Lord and Saviour at the age of 10, but sadly wandered off the path in her teens. At this stage, Dan was far from any relationship with God and was among those who mocked Leanne for her faith. Later, Dan and Leanne began dating, but sadly the relationship soon came to an end. But after a stint in Christian missionary work, Leanne recommitted her life to Jesus to love and serve Him alone. Dan and Leanne got together again, now in their late teens. God had a plan. Leanne invited Dan to join her in church. I was always hung over on a Sunday morning. It was like we, we, I'd go out on a Saturday night and then there was this thing that was happening in the morning. And I remember just sitting there thinking, these people are ridiculous. There's got to be something in this. And I was like, so if... God, if, if you are real, then you, you need to let me know now, otherwise I'll probably need to leave. And it was at this point that I just remember this sensation. It was it was almost like a combination of, of pins and needles and fire. And it kind of felt like I was being lifted off the floor. God's plan had begun to work out in this young couple's life. I chatted with Dan and Leanne in their home for today's The Reality. So sitting with Dan and Leanne in their home to find out a little bit about their life and how they came to know Jesus as Lord and Savior. Leanne, I believe that you had um, quite an input in this man's life. Um, Dan, you were right out there somewhere. And and, uh, Leanne, you had a relationship with God, but things went a little bit awry. Tell me, how did you find Jesus in the first place? Um, My nan and granddad had started going to um, a Pentecostal church and they were in their kind of 50s, 60s and I just noticed a huge difference in them Um, so I asked if I could go one night and I literally walked into the church building and I just felt the presence of God there was something that these people had that I wanted Mm, mm. Um, so I carried on going and after a few months uh, yeah, I just asked God into my life so how old were you about at this um, stage? I was 10 or 11. Okay, so you said you went to this church as a 10-year-old yeah. and sensed something. What was it that you felt? Um, I think it was just the Holy Spirit. Um, there was something that these people had that, that was making them happy. Everyone was just lovely and just had this joy and peace. And I just knew that I wanted it. And uh, the preacher, did he sort of preach blood and and thunder? I mean, what was it in the message that made an impression on you? Um, No, it was was very happy and it was very love orientated. And yeah, it was just, it was just the gospel. It was just the idea that Jesus actually died for us and he wants to know us. And we're going to come to um, the point at which you met and things started working out in your life, Dan. And, and as we said a little earlier, you weren't exactly anywhere near Leanne's place in life uh, as, as regard to your relationship with God at this stage. But, you know, I believe the Bible says, I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. And as Christians, we think that's very spiritual. You know, that's for me as a Christian. But I believe that God's plans exist from the time we are born, even before we know him as Lord and Saviour. So, uh, Leanne, you'd given your life to Jesus. What happened after that as a young person? Um, After that, I grew up following God and I would always have called myself a Christian. 
but actually I got a bit distracted and a bit off the path really um, in my late teens and just started getting in with the wrong crowd really. Mm. So you, you fell away from church faith, did you still pray? I still prayed um, but I know that I wasn't listening to God and I was just kind of going through a bit of a rebellion, doing my own thing. Okay, Dan, let's uh, turn to you now. So in, in your childhood, what was your childhood like? I would I would say that I had a very normal childhood, but I mean, what is normal? Um, my um, my upbringing when I was a young child, I was I was um, from a non-Christian household. Um, my parents got divorced when I started secondary school. Uh, my mum raised me. Um, I, I saw my my father occasionally, and and yeah, like I found it was better that way. Um, and I would I would say that yeah, it was it was it was good overall. Okay, but then um, when you hit your teens, how did life turn out? Um, my, well, during my early teens, you, you kind of discover like who you want to be, who you are, and you, you, you try and figure things out for yourself. And it was probably going into college, going into my later teens, that I just got like really bored. And uh, I, I, the friends that I, I had, like we, we just used to... We we stood outside the the gates. We used to smoke together. We used to do uh, recreational drugs, recreational drinking, um, and and that was just part of my my lifestyle. It was it was a uh, go to college in the daytime, uh, and on a weekend we we would just um, party. Is, is how I'd describe it together. Yeah, you call it recreational drugs and alcohol, but there's nothing, <laughs> you know, um, easy about that. Uh, it's a danger. Drugs are a danger. Did you find that you got addicted or to become a, a controlling element in your life? Um, I think to to some extent I did, be, but you only realise that when you try and not do it. So like while while I was doing it, I would have said that I was just just happily enjoying my time with my friends. I was never considered or um, even thought about needing any sort of rehabilitation or something like that. We just saw it as a as a good time and just a part of everyday life. It was it was quite uh, a strange thing thinking about that now, but um, at the time, yeah, it was it was fairly normal, and it was really surprising how many people that I knew that also found it normal. Um, so it was just part of our it was part of our life mm -hmm. so where was God in your life at the stage <laughs> God was a uh, uh, he was well as as far as I was aware he he didn't exist so like I was uh, I, I knew Leanne from school I knew she had a Christian upbringing but I was probably one of the people that used to make fun of her because of it because I just <laughs> thought it was absolutely ridiculous <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you had no no connection with God, uh, no Sunday school, no input at all. Absolutely uh, nothing. I I did go to a a Catholic primary school, so I did have some sort of baseline teaching. But by the time that I was able to make my own decisions in like early teens, that just all fell away, and mm -hmm. it was just it was just in the past. But God had a plan for your life because mm -hmm. Leanne entered your life. Now you knew her as a child. But that relationship developed. What happened, Leanne? Um, we started dating when we were about 19. We had been friends for a few years at school, so we, we knew each other quite well. Um, and, yeah, we both just um, would go to work and then go out on a Friday night and drinking and partying. And that was it, really. It wasn't a great relationship, but we were young and just having fun. So you were pretty much indulging in the same style of life that, that Dan had, although you had a, a relationship with Jesus? Yeah, and even at that point, I would still pray and I would still have said that I was a Christian. Looking back now, I don't think I was what I would call now a Christian, um, but I thought I was. Mm. But God still had his finger on your life. Um, after that, I believe you said that you separated, you broke up the relationship? Yeah, I, I think I just got fed up. We, we were both just selfish and the relationship didn't mm. feel like it was going anywhere. 
we, we it was biked. just turbulent wasn't it it yeah. was it was we, we would we'd party hard and we'd argue hard that's the way that I would describe it um it, it was it was just it, it wasn't sustainable no it it wasn't real love it wasn't sacrificial it wasn't kind it was just a selfish immature relationship really and what can I get out of it kind yeah. of love yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, and so you you broke up um Leanne and where were you spiritually when that happened so when we broke up I kind of reassessed everything and realized that all our friends were mutual friends I I didn't really have much of an identity by myself I had kind of put everything into our relationship so I went down a bit of a path of rediscovery and I went back to church where I hadn't been for quite a few years so I went down a bit of a path of rediscovery I realized I didn't have many friends that weren't mutual friends and I reconnected with um, some old church friends and just started to try and find out who I was without Dan. Okay, so did you start going back to church? Yeah, I started going back to church and I started going um, to a house group that had just started um, with an old friend from church as well. So how did you feel? Um, you know, you had this little wayward experience in life and you were doing the kind of stuff that Dan was doing when you were dating and now you're back in church. Um, did you feel, I don't know, guilty at all? Yeah, I did feel guilty um, and I was nervous going back. Um, more nervous about people judging me really than God judging me because... I never felt like he really left me, hmm. even though I had kind of left him. Um, so I never felt that he was really angry at me, just kind of like a disappointed parent, really, mm -hmm. when you <laughs> mm -hmm. when your child goes and does her own thing. Um, but yeah, so I was nervous about going back, but everyone was really, really lovely. Um, and I made some new friends as well. Uh, and God put people in my life who were kind of on the same part of the journey as me, which really helped. So there came a point when uh, you said, OK, Lord, I'm sorry for the, you know, for the detour. I want to commit my life to you again. Was it a decisive moment in your life? Yes. Yeah, so what happened next was in October, um, I went to visit um, a friend who was running YWAM um, in America and he had been a friend from church who was a missionary in China and he had moved to YWAM to run uh, discipleship training courses for young people and I very randomly went to visit him with his mum for a few weeks and she said why don't you come and do uh, the course in January so I got back and um, yeah, I went and did it for five months. And that's when you said, okay, Lord, here I am, I'm yours. I'm yours, sold out for Jesus. Yeah, I was, I was 100% all in then. You're listening to The Reality, produced by Sure Reality, a listener-supported radio ministry. We depend on the generous gifts of our listener to produce this program. You can help reach millions of folks with the sure reality of the message of Jesus by becoming a sure reality vision partner. To partner with us, please visit the website surereality.net and click on Become a Vision Partner. If you've just joined us, a very hearty hello. Thank you so much indeed. My name is Dudley Anderson. This is The Reality, a half-hour talk show talking about the sure reality of real life as found in a relationship with God through Jesus Christ. If you'd like to know more, please drop me an email, dudley at surereality.net. Maybe you've been listening up and you have some questions. I'd love to answer those questions, dudley at surereality.net. For more information on this radio ministry, please visit that website, surereality.net. Well, today in the reality, we're speaking with Dan and Leanne Adams. Leanne shared how she came to faith in Jesus at the age of 10, but her faith wasn't very strong. Sadly, Leanne wandered from the lifestyle of worship in her early teens by indulging in recreational drugs and drinking. 
Dan and Leanne knew each other from school and began dating, both living it up in the youth culture of the time. But their relationship was shaky, and they soon fell apart. Shortly afterwards, Leanne returned to church and recommitted her life to Jesus. By his love and his mercy, the Lord forgave Leanne and healed her soul. Dan, on the other hand, was still out there, living a life far removed from where his future wife now found herself. Let's find out more about this relationship inspired by the plans that God knew he had for these two lovely people. I spoke with Dan and Leanne in their lovely home in Worcester, England. Sitting with Dan and Leanne in their lovely home, finding out a little bit about their life and experience. And uh, Leanne just shared with us uh, how she came to know Jesus as Lord and Savior and uh, went AWOL for a short time, uh, dated Dan in the process, but then came back to Jesus. Um, so after this, this return to Jesus, Leanne, uh, you gave your life to Jesus. Was Dan still around? Um, yeah, so so I'd been to America for two weeks and just really rekindled everything with God and just made the decision to follow him wholeheartedly. So Leanne, we've just heard how, uh, you know, you had a little detour in life and uh, you uh, fell away for a short while but then recommitted your life to Jesus. Um, Dan was still there in the background. Um, were you praying for him? Was there anything happening in his life? I'm going to ask you in a minute, Dan, but let's hear from Leanne. Yeah, so I was praying for Dan um, and I didn't think it was a huge problem at the time that we were dating and that he wasn't a Christian. I just believed it would happen eventually. Um, but then I went away um, abroad to meet my friend um, who was running a missionary organisation in Florida. And I spent a few weeks with him and he said, um, D does it worry you that uh, Dan's not a Christian? And suddenly it hit me, um, you know, what a problem that was going to be for our future and how much I needed him to meet God. So I remember praying for Dan and just crying out to God on this beach saying, please just let let him come to know you, Lord. And so, Dan, you were unaware of the prayers. Was God working in your life? Um, well, <laughs> at the time it, it didn't it didn't seem so, but I just remember when Leanne came back from those two weeks, um, she she was just persistently persistently asking me to come to church with her on a Sunday morning, and like I was I was very reluctant, but like you, you know you, you do what you got to do in a relationship, and and I came I, I started to come along with her to sit next to her, and. Um, yeah, it was a very, very strange experience. Yeah, um, I, I remember just what, like being really reluctant to to kind of walk through the doors, just thinking like that there's going to be so much judgment in this building because I was always hung over on a Sunday morning. It was like we, we I'd go out on a Saturday night and then there was this thing that was happening in the morning. <laughs> but you, you you don't go out on a Sunday morning if you if you go out on a Saturday night. So it was I knew there would be a smell of some sort of alcohol that was on me when when I was going there. It's like I was just awaiting this sense of judgment when I walked through the doors, and there was none. There was wow. absolutely, there was wow. none. So all of that fear in the background was just completely in my head. But I, yeah, I came through. And I remember the first time uh, just sitting in this building, just sitting there thinking, all these people are crazy. <laughs> they, they've they just got their, their hands in the air and they're, they're singing to no one, but they're, they're so happy. Um, it, this is just absolutely bizarre. Yeah. Um, and... Yeah, I came like maybe a couple of weeks, a couple of weeks in, in a row. I came with Leanne to, to church and say she kept inviting me, and uh, it was probably probably like the third week there that I I said, you know what, these these people are ridiculous. There's got to be something in this, and I was like, so if God, if if you are real. Mm -hmm then you, you need to let me know now, otherwise I'll probably need to leave because this is a bit too much. And it was at this point that I just remember this sensation. 
it was it was almost like a combination of of pins and needles and fire and it kind of felt like I was being lifted off the floor mm. and I just remember just I still had it I still had control over my body it wasn't like this overwhelming thing that I need to go and do something because I remember sitting down in my seat and when the altar call came I was like I'm still not getting up I'm not going up to the front I was just really reluctant but at that point I knew something had changed I knew that there was something there I just didn't want to commit to that and I didn't want to admit it because it would just completely change everything that that was going on in in my life really because there's one of those it's that moment when you encounter god that's like you've got a choice to make now either your life changes or it or it doesn't and i just remember just sitting sitting back in my seat going no i'm not i'm not i'm not committing to that maybe it was all in my head and so week (laughs) next week i did exactly the same thing again god if you exist then then show me was it just all in my mind and it happened again (laughs) and then it happened again the week after and the week after that and the week after that until at one point it didn't and it was at that point that um, a man called George Miller was preaching and he I just remember sitting there laughing like he was such a funny guy telling stories about him and his wife and his his past and stuff like that and I just remember sitting in my seat thinking ah Christians can be quite normal (laughs) like there's 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 uh, the same story I can relate to some of the stories that are going on and um, it was at this point in the in this service that I didn't feel that that mystical sensation but I did hear God's voice for the first time and I just remember him saying, listen, I'm not going to perform for you anymore. What I want to do is, is I, I want a relationship with you. So be brave, essentially. Uh, man up. <laughs> Walk to the front wow. and, and, and let, let's begin that. Let's begin that journey. Wow. wow. Yeah. Wow. And so that was, my, that was my introduction to faith. <laughs> so you walk to the front. And how did you feel sort of letting go and admitting, you know, you had it wrong? God, you're right. How did that feel to you? I think, to be honest, it was quite like it, after the weeks leading up to it, it was quite relieving. But I, I, I tell you, like <laughs> it was it was one of those things where God just throws you in at the deep end from the beginning because I was stood up at the front. I knew that I was talking to God, but there was a row of people standing to the left or right of me and they were falling over. And I was like, what on earth have I gotten myself into? <laughs> and God was like, you'll see. You'll see what's going to happen. And um, I just remember it was at that point that I had this, I had this, this relationship where I could I could talk to God on a daily basis from that point and and we Jeez. did we started that conversation that that's what it felt like praise God that's amazing and Leanne how did you feel when all this was happening oh amazing it was just the answer to so many prayers and it just felt like God saying like uh, you know I love Dan more than you do and I've got this mm-hmm and we said earlier God's got a plan for our lives and that plan exists from the time we were born I believe even before Jesus before we acknowledge Jesus as Lord and Saviour his hand is upon our lives Mm. and Dan you are now a minister of the gospel a pastor in the church what is your vision what is in your heart what would you want to do in the kingdom of God Uh, for me my passion is to just be a, a demonstration and, and a vessel for the kingdom of God within whatever community I find myself in wherever I find myself just to let others know that like no matter what their situation that, that there is hope and that God does care for them and he is watching them and he is with them no matter what their lifestyle looks like at the minute that that God has got a plan for their life and and in a sense it, it just takes that release it takes a, a yield into the the commitments or the the wrongs that you've already made in your own life to to begin to start seeing that and to walk that out in your life and I've got to say from my own experience there's there's nothing better so if if you are listening <laughs> to to us um, and and you've heard our story and something is ringing true then then just just ask him to to make himself known to you and you can begin that journey right away. Well, the 
Today on The Reality, we've been speaking with Dan and Leanne Adams. What an amazing story of the providence of God, of how God meets us where we are. In fact, as we've heard in that story, God knew Dan and Leanne way before they ever committed their lives to Jesus. And that is what's so significant about their story. And I believe that it's significant about your story and my story too. I'd like to share a scripture that's meant so much to me in my life. One of my life verses. It's found in Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 29 and reading from verse 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for welfare and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. Then you will call upon me and come to me and pray to me, and I will hear you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. Isn't this amazing? God knows the plans he has for us. God's got a design for your life. He's got a purpose for your life and my life, as much as he has for Dan and Leanne's life. And I know that God's plan will work out in your life if you do as the scripture says, seek him with all your heart. I love this because it reminds us that God gives us peace and hope and a future. You see, God knew you before you were born. As we discovered in the life of Leanne and Dan, God had a plan for Dan's life while Dan was still living it up and indulging in drugs and alcohol and and parties and wild living. God's hand was upon that young man because God knew that he was going to call Dan into ministry to serve him to preach the good news, the gospel of Jesus. Let's read now from Psalm 139. O Lord, you have searched me and you know me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You search out my path and my lying down. You are acquainted with all my ways. God is acquainted with your ways as much as he was with Dan and Leanne's ways. Down to verse 13. For you formed my inward parts. Listen, you knit me together in my mother's womb. God's plan for your life began right in the beginning when you were conceived. Yes, God knew the moment you were conceived and his plan for your life began in your mother's womb before you were even born because God knows your past, your present and your future. My frame was not hidden from you when I was being made in secret, intricately woven in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my unformed substance. In your book were written every one of them, the days that were formed for me. Did you hear that? In God's book, your days have been written. God knows you. He's omnipresent all over the place all the time. Omniscient. He knows you intimately as much as he knows me and Dan and Leanne and every single one of these seven billion odd people that are on this planet even now. God knows you because he knows all things. And every single one of your days have been written in his book, even before you know him as Lord and Savior. It could be you're listening up today and you think, That's all very well for the Christians. God's plan is working out for their lives. But as we've heard in the story of Dan and Leanne today, God's plan works out in the life of every man and woman, even before they come to faith in Christ. So why don't you turn your life over to him today? Why don't you just say, come into my life, Lord Jesus. I choose to follow your plan. I will seek your will with all my heart. In Jesus' name. If you'd like to know more, please send me an email, dudley at surereality.net. Email me dudley at surereality.net. This radio program is produced by Sure Reality, a listener-supported radio ministry. You can partner with us at that website, surereality.net. So it is from me, Dudley Anderson, wishing you well and keep your eyes on Jesus.